or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, since the last briefing uh, that we were here last Friday, we have announced no new cases of COVID-19. Uh, and again today, we have no cases. Uh, so we remain having one active case of COVID-19 in our province. Uh, for those who are count the numbers, uh, to date we've had 1,067 cases of COVID-19 in total. We've had, we've had 61,626 Nova Scotians who have been tested and the results have been negative, and we've unfortunately had 63 deaths. There are no licensed long-term care homes in Nova Scotia with active cases of COVID-19. As our province reopens and we learn to live with COVID-19 in our lives for the, for the short to medium term, it remains vitally important for anyone who has symptoms of COVID-19 to seek out testing. It's key to containing the virus and knowing where it exists that, uh, that anyone who might have COVID-19 get tested so we can isolate them if they're positive and, and work with their contacts uh, to quarantine and test them as well. I know there's been a number of questions from the media uh, throughout this week uh, seeking updates on the last new case that we announced on July 15th. Uh, when this case was announced, the source of infection uh, for that individual was not clear. Uh, and public, since then, public health has been investigating uh, any potential to understand contacts and where this person may have uh, themselves gotten infected. Uh, and we, that's what we do with every single case. Uh, while a very small number of close contacts have been identified for this case, the source of the infection of the case has not yet been determined and the, and the investigation on this case is ongoing. The fact is, however, as, as we saw during our first wave, that for some cases, the source of infection may never be determined. Um, this shows why it's important for people to continue to follow the basic preventive measures. We, they, even though we're at a low risk now, it's not zero risk. So we need to continue to understand that we are living with COVID for, for now and for, for, as I said, for, the, for a number of months, if not a year, years to come. Um, so it's important that we all follow uh, the, prevent, the, the basic preventive measures. Those are the tools we have to control COVID. Yesterday, the QE2 uh, Health Sciences uh, Microbiology Lab uh, processed 677 tests. Um, and the fact that we are, um, that even though we, we're, we're testing, we tested that number yesterday, uh, we aren't, we're seeing very few uh, cases and all but one in the last few weeks has been related to travel. That's good news, but it doesn't m uh, mean that we can be complacent. We have to remain vigilant. We have a lot of tr uh, people moving around our province and coming in out of the province it's necessarily so. Uh, COVID remains a global issue and, and we can't uh, expect that Nova Scotia is not going to be part of, of, the, of the ongoing pandemic. So once again, uh, I, I, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, move, move forward around mandatory masks like we talked about last week. Uh, I want to thank Nova Scotians who are, uh, remain mindful of the public health measures uh, that we all need to do to, to keep uh, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Uh, we are proving that we're capable of adapting to our new normal. Uh, and on that, I just want to uh, make a little side note that uh, around lining up in stores, I got a letter, a very nice letter from a, an elderly gentleman the other day, and he asked me to remind Nova Scotians that there are some elderly people and people with disabilities that who can't stand for long periods of time. Um, and so as part of our compassion and caring for one another, uh, we need to have, uh, when we create lineups for because of physical distancing, we need to have seating accommodations. Uh, and also, uh, as individuals, uh, it'd be nice that we could just say to these people to go to the head of the line, uh, because we have the, if we have the capacity to stand and they don't, uh, it's the kind thing to do. So thank you to that gentleman for writing me, and I hope people uh, uh, take note of, uh, of his request. I'm noticing that more people are adapting to wearing non-medical masks, which is, which is great. Uh, as I've said before, the evidence on non-medical masks has evolved throughout the pandemic, uh, and our public health direction has evolved along with it. As a result of that, last week we announced uh, that non-medical masks would be mandatory on public transit and transportation, and that law came into effect today. At last, last week I said that was the first step, and today we are taking the next step. So as the Premier said, effective July 31st, non-medical masks will be mandatory in most indoor public places in Nova Scotia. 
We're doing this because we know that along with all the other uh, public health measures, uh, non-medical masks are effective in helping prevent the spread of COVID-19. As I've said many times, that package of public health measures, which include masks where appropriate, are the tools we have. And if we do all do them well, they can have a sub <clears throat> substantive impact in protecting us. Before the second wave of COVID arrives, and in all likelihood it is coming sometime in the fall, uh, so we need to be prepared. And part of that preparedness is making mask wearing uh, much more of a habit, making it the norm uh, for all Nova Scotians. So let me unpack the details uh, of what we mean by indoor public places where non-medical masks will be mandatory. Indoor public places are, are locations, either privately or publicly owned, where the general public has full access. So for purposes of the mandatory mask policy, this includes uh, indoor retail businesses, personal service, service establishments such as hair and nail salons, spa, spas, and body art facilities, shopping centers and malls, places of worship or faith gatherings, places for events like conferences or receptions, and train or bus stations, ferry terminals, and airports. It includes public places where food is served, places like restaurants or licensed establishments, a food court at a shopping mall or a food store, concessions at a movie theater, or any location where food or beverages are being served. You can take off your mask for eating and drinking, but when you, for instance, in a restaurant, when you're eating, sorry, when you're entering the restaurant, waiting to be seated, going to the washroom, or getting ready to leave, you must be wearing your mask. On the topic of restaurants and licensed establishments, uh, I want to note that effective today, we are making them safer by requiring that people remain seated uh, when they're at a restaurant or licensed establishment, except while entering and exiting or going to the washroom. Having people uh, out of their seats, moving around, mingling increases a significant level of risk. We're seeing that in other jurisdictions, even in Canada. So we're taking the step to make our, our restaurants, licensed establishments as, uh, uh, even safer. All these safety steps uh, are, are what we need to do to maximize the ability to let these businesses function uh, and, and people to go to them, but keep them as a safe environment. Indoor public places also include places for cultural or entertainment services or activities, things like movie theaters, the symphony, a concert, or, live, or any other live theater performance. They also include places for sport and recreation like gyms, yoga studios, indoor tennis facilities, uh, with the exception that when people are actually doing a physical or other type of activity where a mask cannot be worn, then they can take the mask off. So for instance, if you're going to work out at a gym, uh, you need to wear the mask when you enter the gym, when you're in the change room, but when you're actually working out, then you, you, you can remove the mask. And while I'm on the subject of sports, I, I, it's, I, it's my pleasure to note that uh, we have a solution that will allow baseball and softball games to resume. Uh, this solution uh, is going to allow incidental, uh, sh uh, time, uh, very uh, uh, limited and, and time limited uh, uh, direct contact between athletes. This has implications for some other medium contact sports as well. So Sport Nova Scotia will be reaching out to these sport organizations and all the sport organizations that are, that are impacted early next week. And there'll be more information to share once that communication to those stakeholder groups is done. So back to the list of public places. It also includes the common areas of a tourist accommodation, for example, a hotel lobby, or hallways, or the elevator. Uh, however, it does not include those same type of common areas of the, 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 the lobby, the elevators, in an apartment or a condo building, because those are considered uh, uh, private uh, spaces. It does include public areas of a university or college campus, such as a library or common areas of a faculty building or student union building. It does not include classrooms, labs, offices, or the residences. Our, our, man, our mandatory mask policy does include common areas in an office building, such as the lobby, reception area, or elevator. 
But, but once you step inside a private business in that office building, the mask requirement does not apply. And I'll use the example, uh, my dentist is in Sunnyside Mall in Bedford. So under this, uh, when I get in, when I go to the dentist next, when I'm in the, in the mall, in the elevator and in the lobby area, uh, up on the fourth floor, when I go to the dentist, I need to wear a mask. Once I enter that, uh, that, uh, that dental space, I don't have to wear a mask. I will. But also the dentist's office has the ability to create their own policy for that private area. But once you're into a private office space, uh, it's up to, the, it's up to the, uh, the, uh, the operator of that private office space. Many of the private businesses uh, have already chosen to put mass policies in place, uh, and we encourage others to take the same step uh, and require the use of masks by their staff uh, and clients and customers. The, our policy also includes municipal or government offices or government locations that offer services to the public. So, for example, Access Nova Scotia locations will require staff who serve the public as well as the clients to wear masks. Municipal and provincial departments can set their own policies for mask use in other parts of these offices. So, for example, my department, the Department of Health and Wellness, has adopted a policy that uh, staff and any visitors to the office will, will, will need to wear masks when in the common spaces within our, uh, or within our office building. Masks will not be required in a courtroom, but will be required in common areas outside the actual courtroom. And that was a decision made by, by the court services, uh, and, and that's in, in relation to the, the need to appropriate functioning of, of the actual courtroom, but the common areas uh, in a, uh, that are associated with the courtroom will require masks. There are a couple of uh, uh, exceptions that are allowed. So a business or a government official can ask you to your, remove your mask for identification purposes. The commonest one is getting your picture taken for your driver's license. And of course, you will be allowed to remove your, at, your mask for a, a, temp, a short period of time for that purpose. Mask will also be, uh, be uh, allowed to be temporarily removed for ceremonial reasons, such as the taking of communion or a bride or groom during your marriage ceremony or wedding photos. If you're getting a, a personal service or treatment that requires moving your mask, such as a beard trim or some kind of a, a facial treatment, you can remove the mask, but you must then put it back on as soon as that service or treatment is done. And this has already been addressed in the reopening plans for, uh, for a barber and the cosmetology sec sectors. This policy does not change anything in the back to school plan that, that we announced on Wednesday. Schools, daycares and day camps uh, will continue to follow their existing uh, reopening plans. Uh, as, we, as, as we have done uh, with public transportation, uh, we said uh, last Friday, we said children under two are exempt. But as we've thought about this and, and looked at some, other, at, at some other jurisdictions, today we're adding uh, for, for public transportation and as part of moving forward with public buildings, that in, in situations where children that are two to four uh, and their parent or caregiver cannot get them to wear a mask, those of your parents, uh, I remember being there with my kids. There are occasions when it's in challenging behaviors. So in those situations, we say it's, it's okay that, that for that period of time, in that specific event, that the child not be uh, required to wear a mask. The last thing we want to do is have a, have a mother uh, be forced to leave a bus because their child is having a hard time and, and can't put on a mask at that time. We also know that people with valid medical reasons for not wearing a mask are exempt. But as I mentioned last week, there are very few valid medical reasons to not wear a mask, and they're mainly related to anxiety. The Canadian Thoracic Society states that there is no evidence that wearing a mask worsens a chronic lung condition such as asthma or chronic obstructive lung disease. I do recognize that for some people with chronic breathing conditions, wearing a mask can create anxiety. There are also people with mental health conditions for whom wearing a mask uh, is, uh, is, uh, can create anxiety or exacerbate an existing anxiety disorder. However, there are, for many people, there are ways to overcome anxiety, such as practicing wearing a mask for short periods of time at a very a safe space, such as at home. But we recognize that, our, that there are some people with, 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 med with valid medical reasons. There are also individuals with cognitive or developmental disabilities that are unable to wear a mask. But the vast majority of us are able to wear masks. 
So as I said last week, please don't go looking for a reason to not wear a mask. We will not be asking for medical certificates, uh, so don't go to your doctor's office looking for one. Um, we're, not, we're not going down a road of requiring medical certification. Um, our line is, please don't ask, just wear a mask. We recognize that this is a significant step for everybody. Um, we ask all Nova Scotians who are capable of acquiring their own masks to do so. Many, many of you already have. Uh, but ha having said that, we are looking at ways to ensure masks are available for anyone who, who may have difficulty getting one. So we've already started work with the transportation sector of, of distributing some of the government uh, supply of non-medical masks. And we're looking at needs in other sectors as well. Uh, we're also working on resources to help owners of, a, of, of, a, of the affected public places to communicate that masks are mandatory in their spaces. So, for instance, common signage that, it, that, would, uh, that could be used in any location, uh, the same message and the same look and feel, if you will, across the province. So we're taking a cooperative and positive approach to mandatory masking rather than an enforcement approach. But I believe and I have confidence that the vast majority of Mo Nova Scotians will do the right thing and will wear a, 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 non, a mask when it's required. People should also be aware that businesses have the right themselves to refuse to uh, entry or to refuse service to people who are not wearing a mask when they're, when they're required to, but always with the allowances for the small number of people with valid reasons for not wearing a mask. So as I said earlier, and I've said many times before sitting here, that wearing a mask along with all the other core public health measures is how we will minimize the impact of a second wave of COVID-19. It is our best chance to keep our communities and the economy as open as possible as we move into the fall and a possible second wave. Non-medical masks reduce your risk of COVID-19 but most importantly, they substantially re reduce the risk of you passing your infection on to somebody else. So if everyone who can wear a medical mask in indoor public places and public transportation does so, we will keep each other safe. It's about caring for each other, creating a positive community and using common sense. So let's all make wearing a mask a habit. When you grab your keys to leave home, grab your mask as well. I know there's a long list of places to remember, but all you really have to remember is this, when in doubt, wear a mask.